I'm Jen Riley. This video was about the siding, foundation, below grade installs, and permitting process that I went through while building my cob house. I will also be including mistakes and things I would do differently now. First off, I met with the building inspector before I bought my land and numerous times prior to seeking a building permit. I wanted to know how open he was to alternative building methods and sought his advice on everything I could. I was fortunate that he embraced alternative building methods and landowners constructing their own buildings. I highly recommend to anyone wanting to build with Cobb to do the same. Your inspectors are there to protect you and future owners. If you can embrace this idea, working with them will be much easier. Come to see them as advisors and helpers rather than enemies. The house sits on 40 acres, which sounds huge, but most of the land is heavily treed and sloped. My desire is to have as gentle a footprint on the land as possible. Since I didn't want to cut down a bunch of trees, nor did I want to excavate a lot of soil, my options were limited. The location I decided to use is level, close to the road, and has only one tree in the middle of the open space. There is a pre-existing power pole less than 100 feet from the house, and the pre-existing methane well is around 600 feet away. There is no access to public water for miles. I anticipated around $30,000 to install a well if I even found water, so I didn't even attempt to dig one. Because water is scarce here, hauling is a common practice. I chose to have a cistern and haul water, so ease of water and propane delivery in the future was also considered. The first thing I needed before I could get a building permit was an approved site for the septic system. Finding an acceptable location was difficult because of the shallow, rocky, and heavy clay soils. Bad rock is close to the surface, which is good for the foundation, but bad for the septic system. The approved septic system wound up being around 500 feet from the house. Originally, I had planned to build another structure closer to the spot, but that plan fell through. However, since I already had this location approved for the septic system, I used it. Given the chance to do it again, I would probably look for a closer spot. I say probably because you need to dig a hole for every test spot. We used a backhoe to dig the test holes so they were pretty big. I had already dug over 10 holes looking for this spot, and I didn't want to dig even more holes all over my property. The soil at the current location is the best for the leach field anyway. Once I had the location of both the house and septic system, I began to design the house. Curves work the best for the structural integrity of Cobb. The design underwent several changes before the final one, which curves around this pinion tree. My intent was not only to save the tree, but also to feel as though the tree and house are one. Curving the house around the tree allowed the bedroom, kitchen, and living room to have as much southern exposure as possible to provide passive solar heating in the winter. The multi-purpose room on the northeast side of the house has no southern exposure. It does have heat, but it is not zoned, so I was a little concerned about it being cold in the winter. However, the washer, dryer, water heater, and furnace are in this space and will give off heat. I'm fairly confident this will help compensate for the lack of southern exposure. I worked with an architecture student who had experience with Cobb to help finalize the house plans. He drew them up with AutoCAD for the building inspector. We decided that building a roof structure first would be a good plan to help protect the cob from the harsh summer thunderstorms while we were building. I found a barn builder from another county who was up to the challenge to create the roof. I had to get a builder's certification from my county before he could begin construction. I decided on metal as my roof finish since I will implement a rainwater catchment system in the future. Next, I had to decide on the foundation. My original plan was to use stacked native stone. However, after consulting with the building inspector, I decided to go with a gravel trench footer topped with a continuous 12-inch poured concrete stem wall. I added two runs of cinder block to increase the splash distance from the ground to protect the cob. An added benefit of the gravel trench is that it will serve as a French drain. The building inspector gave me ideas for how to devise a radon mitigation plan. I used his ideas did some research, and came up with this idea. My county delegates plumbing and electrical work to the state of Colorado, which uses the International Plumbing and Electrical Code. Fortunately, the state allows a homeowner to design and install their own plumbing and electrical work 
if they have sufficient knowledge and skills to do so. Unable to find a plumbing contractor, I decided to take on the job myself. Thanks to my friend Ed, who did the backhoe work, I allowed for fresh water and electric lines to come into the house and wastewater out. Unfortunately, I didn't take into consideration all the trench work necessary for the wastewater to run through the house before the backhoe work began. I brought my house plans, elevation drawings, roofing materials list, HVAC plan, and septic permit to the building inspector, who was satisfied I had what I needed to move forward. I paid the fee and obtained the building permit. Permit in hand, I set to painting the foundation lines on the ground. This proved to be more of a challenge than I expected. I found that getting the circles the right size and distance from each other was easy enough, but determining the angle was hard. When I drew what I thought was the correct angle, I didn't like where the living room ended up, so I increased the bend in this design. Do not do this. Stick with your original design or redraw your plans before continuing. With the foundation lines painted, I called in a couple of friends to begin the dig. My friend Ed came with his backhoe and dug the foundation trenches. He did an amazing job of staying on my curved lines and excavated everywhere I had outlined. Once he finished, I called in neighbor Mike, who had extensive concrete work experience, to build the stem wall forms. It was then that I learned I needed trenches for the wastewater pipe to drain from the kitchen to the bathrooms and out of the house. So Mike and I, well, mostly Mike, jackhammered and dug the trenches for the wastewater drain. Once the underground plumbing was installed, I called in the plumbing inspector and failed. He sympathized with my challenge to find a plumber and gave me a website to look up. I downloaded the code and set to learn it. Knowing what I know now, I probably would have had Ed excavate the entire footprint of the house, then backfill the soil after the underground plumbing stage was complete. My second underground plumbing inspection passed. Mike worked diligently using masonite to build the stem wall forms and hang the rebar. We cut pieces of four inch PVC pipe and placed them in the form to allow any radon gases to pass through the stem wall and vent to the exterior of the house. With forms and plumbing finally in place, I called to schedule the cement delivery for July 31st. Mike, Ed, another friend Jeff, and worker Weyer Vasily came to help with the cement pour. Calculating the volume of cement needed for an irregularly shaped form proved to be a challenge for me and the cement estimator. I wound up ordering a couple of yards too much. My friends quickly jumped into action and built a form for a cement driveway. Takeaways. Things I would do different or should have done differently. First, I said it earlier, but it bears repeating. Stick with your original plans or rework them. The change to the bend in the middle of my house led to frustrating changes down the line. Second, unfortunately, because the board is so flexible, there were a few places where the supports weren't quite close enough together, so the walls splayed some. It wasn't a huge problem, mostly just an aesthetic issue, really. What I missed. First, I forgot the footer and stem wall for the bathroom and utility room walls in the multipurpose room. Fortunately, the walls aren't load-bearing, so we were able to build a stem wall after the fact. Second, and a pretty big deal actually, I forgot to put a drain pipe in the trench foundation to drain away rainwater. Any water that collects will follow the wastewater drain line towards the septic tank and attract potentially damaging tree roots below the waste pipes. Thank you for staying through to the end. I truly hope you have found this video of my successful and not so successful experiences to be helpful. If so, please like, share, and subscribe, as I will be posting more how-to videos on the house. Feel free to ask questions or leave comments below. I will respond as soon as I can. Thank you again.